This is our planet, Radia. Welcome to Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. Here we are in July, and uh, I have a great show lined up for you tonight. Um, I actually have several people on the line with me. My guest tonight comes to us from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Is Chris Keller. He is a quantum energy practitioner who specializes in the problematic areas of the body and uh, the stressors. He spent 30 years in the printing and newspaper industry, retired in 2007, and doors opened for him that led him into the world of energy healing. He deals in a number of different modalities, some I'm familiar with, some not so much. Uh, I'm kind of familiar with uh, radionics, and I'm familiar with dowsing and working with crystals. And so there's a number of different things that are going on. We love doing shows about alternative, uh, you know, I don't even like the term alternative. Scratch that. This is about healing. You know, when they start labeling things alternative, that's just like, this is not second best. This is the real deal. This is healing. And with that, before I talk myself into another uh, rabbit trail, I want to introduce to the audience, Chris Keller. Good evening and welcome to Off Planet Radio. Hey, Randy. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on. Hey, it's great to have you on. You know, it's funny. Uh, before Hayden ever crossed my path, and I'll just, you know, say props to Hayden. He gets executive executive producer credit for the show tonight. He is the uh, foot soldier for Chris, I guess, kind of the PR guy. And But before I ever crossed paths with Hayden, I had actually seen one of your YouTube videos at one point, and you were... You were talking about aliens and UFOs, and I'm going, all oh, right, this is this is somebody I should talk to. And providentially, universe, line things up, and here you are. Here I am, and, and uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I do talk a lot about the whole alien aspect uh, about health problems. Now, now, the work that I do is is basically finding the root cause of anybody's health problem. It doesn't matter what you have, if it's acne, if it's cancer, if it's hemorrhoids, whatever it is, any kind of, of uh, uh, emotional problems, mental problems, soul problems, no matter what it is, I, what I do is I find the root cause. And what I've found with, within my work is, is trying to find all these answers in my quest with working with quantum energy and working with spirit guides and working with, with all of the energies available to us fr from uh, the creator, from God, from the universe, is, is that I was fed a lot of energy or a lot of uh, information that aliens, uh, zeta reticuli and, and reptilians and archons and, and various other ones do have a very big influence on, on our health problems. Absolutely. I mean, anybody... Okay, for this audience, this will not come as a surprise. Yes, this is a huge issue. To mainstream audiences, this may seem bizarre. I mean, I've had my fair share of encounters with these entities, and I think a lot of my audience has as well. But it's definitely not exactly the everyday encounter that somebody's going to have with their healing practitioner. Chris, I got and I got to ask you this up front: How did you come to understand this? How did you come to accept the fact that that we are dealing with uh, ETs, aliens, uh, non-human, sometimes not, sometimes non-local uh, beings? 
But the way it really got started is is when I started in this in this work of, of healing with with energies and quantum energies and psychic energies, I did uh, uh, meet somebody who is my tool maker in Alberta, Canada. His name is Wayne Gatos, and uh, he is probably one of the the highest people in energy on the planet. His job, his main job is, is to um, run current into the earth grid to, to remove all the negativity, all of the alien aspects uh, so the earth can go through the ascension process. And he deals a lot with uh, moving out ET and aliens and all these different consciousness, all these different multidimensional type of, of species. So he's uh, given me a leg up and, and uh, told me a lot about them, uh, what to expect and, and how to work with them. And then a- after you know learning that from him, my pendulum and my guides, they, they took me to many, many steps farther, uh, deeper down the rabbit hole, if you will, as to number one, identifying exactly what uh, these, these critters are and, and how to get rid of them. And, you know, when we encounter this type of thing, we're dealing with something that's interfering with our energetic field, no matter whether the um, encounters are what you would call uh, a classic abduction scenario or some people call them contacts, but uh, we're dealing with beings that have the ability to interact with us on the quantum level, as you put it, in a way that unfortunately certainly the western mind the modern western mind does still not still doesn't dignify the fact that we are not just this physical uh meat sack body but in fact uh, a larger part of us is is this is this quantum uh, energy field that's around us so in dealing with healing people at that level i imagine that what you're encountering is the ability to read what is going on in the energetic field of a person? That, that's absolutely correct. Um, uh, when I when I work on on somebody, I, I consider many many bodies of, of energy within us. Uh, there's a lot of modalities like Reiki, quantum touch. There, there's different aspects of healing that I consider maybe four, eight, or ten bodies. I consider about sixty different bodies, and. Uh, the ET will, will will consider certain bodies. They work really good in what's called the holographic body. Uh, it's been said that everything around us or everything in life right now is a hologram. Well, we have this body within us. It's called the holographic body, and it's kind of like a movie theater. So if, if an, a, an ET wants to put a program in there and keep that program running, it, it could mean that we keep on repeating the same thing over and over again. Okay, And they, and they can cause a lot of turmoil and trouble in our lives by doing that. Um, this is also the causal body, which is um, a blueprint of our body with, within our aura. Now, the, our physical body, our, our density, reads off of that causal body. And to best describe exactly what it's all about, uh, we've all heard about phantom pain. Okay? You, somebody loses a leg in an accident, mm-hmm. and they, they still have pain in that leg. They, they still feel the leg is there. That's because that leg still exists in that causal body. So your body is reading off it, so your body still thinks it's there. So when they get into these bodies, the causal body, they can make adjustments they, they can put implants, they can do all different types of things to our causal body that will cause an effect within our physical body. So we, we feel that there's something wrong, but yet you go to a doctor and they're going to look at you and say, there's nothing there. So how can, how can nothing be there when you have this pain in your head, when you have this pain in your gut, when you have nausea all the time or dizziness? How can something be there or not be there when you have these symptoms? Well, and you just went into something here that is a problem with allopathic medicine in that our traditional approaches to healing have been through the allopathic route, which is largely dealing only with the physicality of a person, almost to the exclusion of anything else, and even on that scale, dealing with the observable, because they're they're locked into the empirical scientific method. And doctors would in all likelihood, based on what I know of doctors, and I have a brother who is a surgeon, I would say that their intuitive aspects are trained out of them. They are not trained in intuitive medicine in any way, shape, or form. So we're basically, somebody like you is is filling a gap here that's not really taken up by any other type of healers 
in terms of being able to go beyond the physicality of the human. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. When, when you consider a health problem of, of, any, of any sort, again, you have to consider the spiritual energetic component along with the physical component. A lot of energy healers will focus on the energy component or the spiritual part, and, and that does a lot of good work, but it still doesn't quite finish the job. So what I do, I'm sure there's lots of other, other healers that do the same thing, but I, I focus on both. What is a spiritual aspect? What is the universal energetic aspect? of this problem where does it really stem from okay so we, we clear all that out and then we start going after the physical like a, a parasite a virus a bacteria what, whatever it may be so you have to consider both things um, there's a lot of things going on right now in, in, in the universe a lot of big changes happening and on a daily basis now I'm going up level after level w within my guide group and with, with uh, the energies I'm working with and I'm getting fed new energies new thoughts every day when you're working with with healing like this and you're using a, a pendulum and charts and, and you're you're trying to uh identify what is there all this energy works within a law of the universe called the law of identification if, if you identify something you it has to leave so if you let's say you're playing hide and seek and you say one two three on randy but it's really one two three on chris chris is not caught <laughs> same thing in the energy realm. Same with with entities. Same thing with aliens. Same thing with with poltergeists and spirits. If you identify them, they have to go. You 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 raised something interesting there, Chris. The changes we're going through. Um, I, I've been talking about this on radio for about eight years because I knew it was coming a long time ago, and we're in it. And it's called many things. It's called shift. It's called the thinning of the veil, the galactic center. Uh, pick, pick one. But we're in a profound time of extreme change for humanity. And something that I've been getting for a long time now is reports from my listeners, from people that communicate with me, of symptoms of things that are just bizarre sometimes. And even in my own case, uh, I'm a pretty healthy guy. I got very sick last year. Could never quite explain what happened there. But attendant with that was kind of this intensive, intensive energetic that has just been streaming onto the planet nonstop for, I don't know, four or five years now. Talk about that a little bit. Well, what's happening right now, and um, there, there are a lot of energy changes happening in, in the planet. Our, the energy is rising. So at one time, we used to have a frequency, the Schumann resonance, they call it. I think it was right. 40, 42.5 or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. But now it's, it's going up. The Schumann resonance is, is rising. So, so uh, the Schumann, 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 Schumann. Schumann. Yeah. Uh, so, so that is rising. Now, what happens when, when the energy rises within the earth, it also transmits into us. And as our frequency, our energy rises, the low density energies within us, the dark energies are, are shaken out. They're harmonized out of our bodies. And as this happens, they, they leave uh, knocking things over, if you will, like it's trying to kick somebody out of a party mm -hmm. and they start knocking things off of shelves. Well, that's kind of what's going on uh, within us. Now, I, I have a good friend in Winnipeg who's a firefighter he's been doing it about 30 years and he came to see me last week and last week for an appointment he says Chris in all the years I've been doing this I have never seen so many suicides in one weekend the number of suicide rates is going sky high Yes. Okay. That's because people aren't able to handle a lot of the changes that are going on. There's a lot of people who are, have been in relationships for years and years and years. All of a sudden, you, you don't resonate anymore with the person you're with, and you end up splitting up, and nobody really understands what's going on. But in and, and, and the small scale of things, that is what's going on, is the energies are changing. A lot of people aren't awakened to know exactly what's going on, and they're, they're reacting in certain ways that, that is causing... Uh, 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 disruption in, in their life. Now, one of the big things that is going on is what I found out today is, is that, and, and I think a lot of people have known this, but for me, it's, it's new information. There is a war going on on the planet of Saturn, okay? And it's a Luciferian war. Lucifer is on there. It's his war, and we are all connected to it. I don't know how yet. That, that, that's the big thing I, w I wanted to get at is, is uh, whatever's going on on that planet is happening here. You look at what's happening in the Middle East right now. 
It's a powder keg. It's ready to go. And that's because of the intensity on Saturn, and it ripples effect right right into our planet. So a lot of the things going on there. Now, when I do some healing work on people, what I was doing today was I was disconnecting them from Saturn. All of a sudden, their symptoms went away. And I actually just did this purposely just to remove Saturn, nothing else. And all of a sudden, the pain in their body went away. The nausea went away. A, a lot of the ill feeling they had went away. So it is a ripple effect, and it is causing problems within a lot of us. That's pretty flippin' interesting that you would talk about Saturn. Um, this is... Uh we have different planetary influences, and, and we know this, like Mars tends to be associated with war, and that's more than just a, an ancient legend or a myth. There, There's truth to that when you begin to chart these planets and see how they uh, intersect with different historical periods. And Saturn being uh, the ancient god Kronos, is, that's a very interesting statement that you just made. I, I need to think about that a lot. Um, but we are connected to this. We're connected energetically. And st- I, here again, I think you can probably confirm this for me. We're, we're attached to different places, be- I think because, first off, we've not lived one life we've all lived many lives and i suspect that those lives were interplanetary as well i've long suspected that we have ancestral ties to other worlds as well as to this one oh absolutely um anybody who who is is uh, uh energetically uh, um inept everybody who, uh, sorry anybody who has a high energy field around them there's a good chance that that they did come from let, let's say lumeria or or cirrus or, mm-hmm. or some other star system uh, and now what this means is that we didn't get on a ship and come here and stop at a bus stop and jump off the ship it, it's more our our spiritual energy our soul um uh, the essence of us ha- has been taken from there and put into a solid density here in order to, to uh, number one, maybe uh, learn something, uh, also maybe to help the whole uh, planetary evolvement into the new dimension uh, go its course, uh, it, it maybe to help humanity understand what exactly is going on here. So there's a lot of different aspects of, of why we might be here as, as coming from a different star system, but many of us are. And, and more and more people I'm seeing and coming to me, uh, they're saying, yes, I know I'm from a different star system. I just don't know where. I just don't know exactly what it is, but they have this big, strong feeling they're not from here. Yeah, I've encountered that that repeatedly in my life. <clears throat> and I think for some of us, we just know that. Um, and you, th- you think, well, what does that mean? Well, I've noticed that people who are attuned to that also have very marked sensitivities to certain things. And they are prone to certain syndromes. Uh, I went through years of, of depressions and uh, some very dark things in my life that were actually good things because they were a conduit to me understanding aspects of my own destiny do you encounter a lot of that with the people that that you're seeing yeah i, I do uh, what, what i do with, with people generally like that is as i work in an area called the home body and what the home body is is your actual real uh presence on your home planet so because you're you're here and you're there through through quantum entanglement you're in the same uh, you're in the same space at once so if there is a, a a health problem or some kind of disruption on your home body it's going to affect you here just like the ripple effect from saturn to earth okay so there's still going to be that that connection and you can still have that problem and i have worked on some people in that area and it has made a difference so you, you re- when you're doing energy work there's so many things that you have to consider there is things that we're just barely starting to learn and we're just at the tip of the iceberg on knowing what the whole truth is how things are really working what the whole heck is going on here yeah you, you've just opened up a whole conversation about the fact that we're really learning this stuff and that i think you know, I don't even know if five years ago I would have had this conversation. I knew a lot of the concepts. It's taken me most of my life to accept a lot of these things that I kind of already knew. But it feels like there's been an enlargement of the aperture 
of the spirit in terms of really coming to understand things in a way that even if even if we didn't struggle with the idea, for instance, of extraterrestrials or, or the idea that we are quantumly entangled with other worlds and other bodies and other dimensions, you can understand that intellectually, but to begin to act on it is another thing completely. And it seems like now we're being imparted tools and a higher level of understanding for all this. Well, that, that's exactly it. And, and for us humans, us inquisitive, dense humans, we have to try and logically be able to figure anything out. So, so when, you, when you talk to somebody and tell them that they've got the devil in them, they've got Lucifer in them, they've got an ET entity within them, they kind of look at you funny and, and they can't figure out how can this be in me. And then you try to explain it the best you can. And even we still can't even explain it the way it really is because we don't really know the way it really is. So, so as humans, we have to try and, and always logically line it up and, and envision it and, and try to rationalize on, on this 3D level what it might be, what it might look like, what it is. Uh, you try and explain the, the meridian system to somebody and, and they look at you kind of funny like, well, if I rip my arm open, would I see the meridian from my shoulder to my fingers? Well, no. But it is there. It does exist, just like all the etheric things that are going on in our, our uh, universe right now. Yeah, well, and see, that's, again, this whole physicality aspect that we're wrapped up in. Uh, I remember meditating, this was a few years ago, where I got this download where I literally saw the universe inside of me, and then it turned inside out. And what was being communicated to me then was basically, yes, every aspect of that universe is inside you and you are externalizing it which was a pretty trippy concept even then for me but we're kind of looking at things from a perspective of this state that we're in this physicality and the eyes and the the senses that we have which are just you know reflections of larger larger sensory streams that that, that are much larger would you agree with that yeah, a hundred percent. Of of course, um, we as we perceive the universe as this big, vast uh, expansion of nothingness with with uh, solar systems and stars and 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 uh, blah 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 all through it, and everything we see through the Hubble Space Telescope is yeah, is Carl Sagan, all yeah, billions yeah, exactly. and billions, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but in all reality, what is the universe? I don't know <laughs> what, how far does it go? What, what's all really going on in there? Heck, I don't know. Who knows? You, you tell me, then we'll both know. Well, and this is the grand puzzle, I, you know, and I do look at it as a mystery, and it may not be a mystery we solve logically. I, I was saying that, too, to kind of get to a place where you came from the business world. You were working in printing and newspapers. That's pretty 3D. How did you make this gigantic leap from the business world into the place where you are now? Good, good question, Randy. Uh, it was about eight years ago. My first wife, she had a rare disease called scleroderma. So she suffered for about six years with it. So about eight years ago, she, she passed away from it. Uh -huh. um, so the old story goes, one door closes, another door opens. I, I was at 46, I was able to retire. So I quit working. I had been working hard all my life, lifting like tons and tons of paper a day and working in a, in a nasty environment. And I, I met somebody who does this type of, of work, um, mm -hmm. doing muscle testing and working with herbs and at a, at a certain level. And I, I looked and I thought, this is pretty cool stuff. So I got nothing better to do. So I, I started going to this guy's store every day and he started teaching me a little bit. Um, and then I ended up buying a course on how to do it. Um, and then one thing led to another. I found these other courses to buy, and, and I met another person who does radionics. I met another person who does the sacred geometry tools. And it all kind of culminated together within about a year of me taking all these modalities uh, uh, under me. And I started picking it up extremely quick. And pe uh, soon enough, people are knocking on my door. Hey, I can hear you. I can hear you cure diabetes. I hear you can cure arthritis and, and, and migraines. And uh, people started coming to my house and, and doing this work. And uh, all of a sudden, I decided, you know what? I got to make a business out of this. I need a clinic. I need an office. And here I am today. I, uh, I've, I've been in my office going on five years 
Uh, I've got clients all over the world. Uh, I do all this work uh, on Skype and on the telephone with with uh, clients from everywhere, from from uh, California to the Middle East to Russia, Australia, all over the world. And Randy, I'm here to tell you, it's working. Um, people are getting healed of of all of their health problems, and everything that I'm finding, including the the alien aspect, the the multi dimensional aspect, the universal aspects of things, going right into the DNA programming of the cro- chromosomes, and finding these little implant chips that aliens are putting in there to have a cause and effect on your body. By removing all of this energy, people's health problems are going away. That actually makes a lot of sense to me. Um, <laughs> My background in doing this show actually begins about five years ago, and very early on, I was obviously interviewing people with um, uh, alien contact abduction experiences, but along with that, I was also interviewing people who were coming out of uh, black ops government programs, uh, specifically MK Ultra, MK Monarch, and, and programs like that, who were also had... These people had been heavily chipped in a very physical way. And as I had these conversations, I became aware of other things such as military abductions where people were saying they didn't know how they were being found. They'd move and they'd have the same experiences over and over again. And then the idea that there were alien implants, the idea that they were putting these into our body, and this is the part you can help me with, Chris. Are we dealing with physical implants? Are we dealing with implants on an astral body level? Explain a little bit about that, because I know that there's people out there that are very interested in this. Yeah, the, these are, I'm going to say, 99.9% uh, uh, on, on an astral etheric level, of, okay. of course. Now, now, they're not going to, yeah, they're not going to hold you down and, and cut your body open and put an implant, and you're going to, first of all, you're going to see something, or you're going to know something's wrong, they're going to see it on an x-ray. It's not a physical thing. It, it is an energetic thing. Now, when, when these ETs, the, mostly the reptilians and the zeta reticuli, when, when they go in on into your DNA, they're working within the epigenome. Okay, they're, they're, they're putting an implant on the epigenome, which, which is a, a little tail that hangs off of the histone with it, within the core of the DNA. And when something is on there, it triggers something within the chromosomes. It, it starts something. It, it makes a change within the programming. I look at the DNA within our body as a computer program, okay? Absolutely. They, they, yeah, yeah, they say that that uh, you know most of our DNA is junk DNA. Well, it's not junk DNA. It's no. just extra hard drive that you got to work with. So so by by going in there and finding all these different programs that are that are turned in and turned on, you can start to to find out exactly what they're trying to do to you and 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 all these different changes. Now, of course, these these ETs. They're all trying to also fix their own DNA. Their DNA has is, is, is been tampered with for so long that they're trying to find a fix for it. They're also trying to find a way to go into the fifth dimension consciousness with us. Okay? So, so, so they're, they're on a quest. They're looking for it in a big way. So, so when they go into the DNA and they do all the implants, they're trying to make things happen so they can experiment and see how they can use our DNA and splice it and make it part of their own. Okay. Now, um, like I said before about the causal body, they can put programs, they can put holographic programs in there. They can put programs in the holographic body to make things happen. So it's, it's all on an energetic level. They put things within our soul. They put things everywhere just to – get different results, and see what happens when they do this. So they're running programs, and these programs are designed to both test us and at the same time enable them to latch on to us because of this ascension process that we're going through. Pretty, pretty much. There's, there's probably some other things involved too, but, but that is, is really what I get on an intuitive level when I ask questions with my pendulum, and, and those, those are the, the, uh, the basic answers that I get. Now, uh, when, when I'm, my wife was, uh, I've got remarried and i got kids now. When my wife was pregnant with our first baby, I, I started testing the baby, of course. I want to make sure this thing is healthy. In the placenta, there was a spirit of a, of a uh, zeta reticuli. Okay, so we're born with these things. I've never heard anybody say that before, but now all of a sudden, uh, that adds a whole new level of understanding to uh, 
generational abduction scenarios. Yes, we're we are born with these things, and, and there is various uh, uh, videos on YouTube from from uh, high profile people who who will attest that yes, we are born with these things. Uh, generally, within our stomach and in our brain, is, is for the most part the the energy is there. Uh, of course, you crack open your brain, you're not going to see one because it's there on a multi dimensional spiritual level. Mm-hmm. It's the spirit, it's mm-hmm. the energy, it's the essence of one that is in there. So so uh, we're all born with this. For some reason, I believe it was an agreement made eons ago that that uh, they're allowed to do this in order just to research their own DNA. But it's gone way too far, and people are just suffering way too much. So now we're getting to that tipping point where God is finally saying, "Enough is enough. Let's do a clearing. Let's do a house cleaning. Let's ascend this planet up and let them uh, live in peace." Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's amen. That's very mind blowing. What type of symptoms would people present that you would be that would lead you to believe that or is there certain types of physical outworkings that that are clues to you or alternatively when you go into a reading do you go into it blank and simply let your your dowsing tell you what you're looking for well what, what i'll do with a client is is I'll, I'll just get some basic symptoms from them what uh, concerns they have, what symptoms they have, and then we'll use that as a focus. You, you, if, if you take a make a focus out of out of the appointment, it, it gets you there a lot quicker. Of mm-hmm. course, if I just douse blindly, it would lead me to certain problems, but it may not get to the concerns of of the, of the client. Now, and there, nine times out of ten, there generally is some type of of consciousness that is there that is not of their own. Whether it's a poltergeist, uh, whether it's uh, an ET, whether it's uh, a curse, whether it's some voodoo, whether it's uh, something demonic or something planetary, generally you're going to find something like that with, within there. Now, now a lot of the ETs, uh, they do work hand in hand with with the demonic, with Lucifer, with with Satan, with the devil. Mm-hmm. They they do work with them. There there is an, a, a a working agreement almost. Where there's one, there is another. And that kind of answers what I was going to ask you, because I was going to ask you if there was a distinction. Uh, A long time ago, I was involved with a church, and I got involved heavily in what was called deliverance ministry. And uh, I, you know, you go into this stuff, and I don't think anything prepares you for it, but I saw some things and heard some things, and, you know, quite frankly, I saw this stuff materialize in front of me. And it felt oddly similar to alien contact experiences. So is the distinction between them specific or or can we just say that there's overlaps along the way? There there is some types of overlaps, but what what I like to do is get as specific as I can. Uh, Mm -hmm. If I just say clear out ET, well, uh, what what if uh, that consciousness doesn't consider itself ET? Then then it it doesn't have to leave your body. So I I do get very specific. I I do get down, is is it primal reptilian? Is it reptilian? Is it zeta reticuli? Is is it it, uh, a a tall gray? Is it a short gray? There's all these different uh, aspects of species. That, that you have to consider the more precise you get the deeper you go and uh, the better result the client is going to get so you get actual visual pictures of these entities or do you just have a knowing it, it's it's more of just a knowing a hundred percent or let's say 99 percent of all my work is done through the pendulum that is my medium that is my ears that is my eyes that is my intuition right there and and uh you know it'll even spell out sentences on a letter chart exactly what i need to know and how to do things how to remove it properly uh there are a lot of people who, who can see things who can smell things and taste things and 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 sense things mm-hmm. whereas myself if, if i had all those sentences it would probably drive me off the Slaw Reb Truck Bridge at minus 30 uh, just to, to get away from it all because uh, it would drive you crazy. There's a lot of people who, who are considered schizophrenic because they hear all these voices, but mm-hmm. it's their spirit guides all yelling at them at once, and the guy can't catch a break. So he doesn't know what it is. Uh, he's hearing voices, and we don't know exactly what – we know what it is, but he doesn't. So the, the uh, uh, community labels him as schizophrenic. Well, in a lot of cases, and this was my experience when I was young, it switched on telepathically, 
and you can't tolerate that level of information. That's, that's why I ask you this question, because it can be overwhelming the amount of data that can stream in if you're like, a, like an open channel. And it took me years to be able to screen things out like that, to be able to screen out telepathic, telepathic thoughts and uh, energetic things that hit me, especially, you know, when you're a kid and you don't know what the hell's going on. Do you get people like that that are what would classically be called uh, schizophrenic or psychotic that are dealing with this? Um, I, I have a, a few clients right now who are experiencing what, what's really interesting is, is that one of them experiences uh, – she keeps on hearing songs. Uh-huh. Okay, they keep, they keep on playing music, and it's stuff from the 50s and 60s that, that she grew up with. Uh-huh. And, and uh, at night, they'll shake her bed, <laughs> okay? And, and she knows what it is, but she doesn't know how to work with it or, or, or for, to, to get rid of it, okay? So she calls me, and we start looking. And, and uh, for me, it is a lot of discovery because it is something that I've never really worked with on that level. We've got it down to the, where the volume is very low, but it's still there. There. But it's a matter of, of finding it. And what I have discovered is, is that it, it is a visitor, okay? It's, it's not called an ET. It's, it's a visitor. And, and you really have to be specific with the identification. But where is it a visitor from? It's a visitor from Saturn, okay? And, and it's coming in, and there's a lot of, of uh, uh, interplanetary travel happening right now with spirits coming in to witness the whole ascension process. Th- this is going to be the hugest thing in the entire universe within any dimension that's ever happened. So uh, there, there are consciousnesses that want to witness this and see it. Now, there's also consciousnesses that are here uh, as, as, let's say, pleasure, okay? So they come into my office, and they're watching me on an energetic level doing battle with the devil in somebody. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. like you and I go into a wrestling match and watching Hulk Hogan beat the heck out of right, right. the Right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. entertainment. So, so it, it is entertainment for them, for sure. So the whole aspect of the spiritual side of this, we've we've had religious systems that have, for instance, and I'll pick on Christianity. I can do that. I was an ordained minister at one point in time. Um, they they talk about spirits. They'll talk about devils. They'll even they'll even deal with them on some level, as it was when I when I did this work. But they seem to deny this great uh, period of time that we're in now where things are just wide open and there's just like all of this stuff. And yet we've got so many different types of entities coming at us. And one of the things that I heard early on, Chris, when I was doing my early interviews with abductees was that religion was not prepared to deal with with the ET problem because there was nothing in their teachings that would affirm that. And so they treated everything like they were demons and they used the classic exorcism type strategies to do this. How in your dealings with this is it different? It- well, I, I have dealt with with uh, the occult. I have I have actually done exorcisms uh, over the phone. Eleven uh, year old boy, mm-hmm. and and uh, you know he he exhibits all of these different traits of walking sideways, and and uh, all of a sudden he will just stop in his tracks and start mumbling something in somebody else's voice. His mom calls me, and says, uh, "Excuse me, Chris, but my son is is uh, demon possessed. Can you help him?" Mm-hmm. So I started working on him, and and I, I started removing the Antichrist. I started moving Lucifer. The devil uh beelzebub uh incubus all of these big name dark dark forces and and sure enough the kid starts writhing on the ground and growling and hissing and his eyes roll back in his yeah. head he starts muttering yeah. something and this actually happened and I, I i heard it now uh, i've also done uh, uh demonic removal on people in my office uh for instance a, a lady comes in and she's got uh, a pain in her right uh, or in, in her ascending colon for 20 years. They take out her gallbladder. They take out her uterus. They do all these oh. operations. Nothing helped. She came in and I, I did some dowsing. I, I, I says, oh, you've got Lucifer in there. She looks at me and goes, what? I says, just humor me for a second. So I, I uh, went and removed Lucifer from her ascending colon. And I just said the words, remove Lucifer. 
And all of a sudden, the pain went from the right side to her left side. <laughs> she looked at me and says, what just happened? That pain moved. It's been there for 20 years. What'd you do? I says, ah, the game is afoot. We're chasing Lucifer. So then I chased him around her body a little bit, and then I kicked him out. I got rid of him. I, I wore him down, and her pain went away for good. It was got completely gone. So, so the whole demonic aspect of, of that ad- identification of that entity what was uh, was Lucifer, okay? So, so uh, the, the, when you go into the ET aspect, same thing. Identify it, move it out. It's just stinking energy. My God, it's like we're a high-rise apartment. We've got all this stuff going on in us. It's amazing. It, it is amazing in its own right, yeah. Does somebody... This somebody have to invest a tremendous amount of belief in what you're doing for you to be successful. Does it th- does it work for you? Does it work against you? Depending on the person's uh, belief structure. Well, ultimately, if if you're going to make an appointment and come see me, you're already open minded enough, uh, right. and, and you you do know that that these types of things exist on, on all these different levels. Um, nobody has ever uh, hung up the phone on me and said I'm I'm out of here. Nobody's ever got up and left my office. Um, people who come to see me, they trust me. Um, when when I do explain something that that is sounding really crazy, I do it in a way that they can understand. I add a little bit of humor in there, and I make people feel comfortable about it. And I I just say, humor me. Let's move this out and see what happens. And they go, okay. But uh, ultimately, even if you didn't have a belief system into it, it could still work. Uh, the only thing is you may not just recognize that it did work. You just might say, oh, it would have gone away on its own anyway. Mm-hmm. So for the, mo- for the most part, uh, having an open mind is, is very important. If you weren't open-minded, you wouldn't be there anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Do you have people who oppose what you do? There, there are people who oppose what I do. Uh, I come from a, a strict Mennonite background. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I live in a place where I have... Amish and Mennonites all around me. I live very close to Lancaster County, 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 Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, the ground zero for Amish and Mennonites. So I'm very yes. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I've got a lot of family. Uh, my, my mom was the youngest of 17 kids, so I've got <laughs> lots of aunts and uncles. Wow. And we, yeah, we just had a family reunion about three weeks ago, and, and I went there, and everybody's like, oh, Chris, so, so what are you doing with your life? And I, I tell them, well, I, I, I do healing work. And they're like, oh, that must be wonderful. Then I start telling them, you know, how I do it. And then they look at me <laughs> and go, oh, may God bless you. I says, yes, God blesses me every day. <laughs> so, so, so I do get a lot of opposition. Um, you know, we, we've got friends that, that uh, we, we go visit, my wife and I, and, and they, everybody loves to sit around and talk about their health problems. And I look at them and say, look, why don't you just come and try it? I can get rid of it. No, that's okay. My doctor's taking care of me as they hack up a lung. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you know, the opposition, people will look at you a little funny and they'll, they'll turn their head and, and keep their distance, but, but uh, they don't know quite what to make of you. Uh, and that, I just accept it for what it is because I know there's always going to be somebody who, who doesn't quite understand it or doesn't quite agree with it. On the other side of that, how do you protect yourself? You're obviously doing hazardous duty here, dude. It's, um, you know, demons and ETs and devils and all the other uh, subcategories of of the underworld that nobody even wants to know about. So what do you do to keep Chris Kaler healthy and uninfested? Well, um, I I consider myself fortunate with with the energy that I do have around me that that things aren't able to get into me that easy. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, now what, what's really ironic is is probably a quarter of all my clientele are other healers. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, oh wow. yeah, I've got I've got people who've been doing this work for thirty forty years, calling me and saying help. That that they know they've been hit. They they know that that they're having these troubles because of the work they're doing, and they've got this big mark on them that that invites all of these energies in. Of course, I mean we're I consider shiny people, so so the entities want to go to the bright and shiny people, right? Because their energy is 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 bigger. Um, now I'm also I'm I'm able to heal myself on on a, on a large scale. I can't do absolutely everything, but uh, my spirit guides will get my attention and say, hey, go into consciousness, and you have to find something in your chakra system, right? 
right now and I'll move it out and it's gone. So uh, ultimately, I, I can take care of myself. I'll just, you know, test myself every every week or so and just make sure that there's nothing there and, and just clear myself out. Now, the, the energy tools that I do use, my office is full of them. So the energy in my office is extremely high. Nothing It's very hard for, for a, uh, a, a dark consciousness to really exist in there. So I feel I'm very well protected and I do have some very good friends, uh, uh, colleagues, I, I call them, that, that do come visit me and they, they help me out a little bit when, when I need it. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the tools that you employ, Chris. Um, and s- s- the sacred geometry tools, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about your application of radionics as well. Okay. Uh, the tools that I use, uh, the, the basis of them is pyramids. Okay, everybody knows about the pyramids of Giza mm-hmm. and, and, and whatnot. Um, the way that a pyramid works is, is at the very tip of the pyramid will be positive ions, and as it slopes down, it becomes negative ions, which are the good ions for your body. Now, the pyramid that, that I, I like to use, it, it's, it's, we call it the silver light pyramid. And there is a picture of it on my website, chriskaler.net. You, you can see it. It's, it's a five-tiered pyramid. There's five different pyramids, seven-inch bases. And they're all glued together in different ways with with, uh, crystals and magnets and lots of different sacred geometry. There's a Shungite pyramid on the top of it. And what this pyramid does is it acts in two different ways. It acts as, as number one, as an antenna for uh, for quantum energy to to be harnessed and coming in. And number two, it acts as an amplifier for that quantum energy. So the the depth or the layers that that this pyramid will will send energy in is about 15 layers, which in the energy world is extremely deep. um, When most people are working with their hands, they might be able to go one, two, maybe four layers deep, and and subsequently the illness will come back after a while. When you're working with uh, an amplifier and an antenna, you can go so deep that this thing is this illness is gone and it doesn't come back. So, so I, I like using that. Um, all I do is hold it over a person's head, say the words to neutralize whatever the problem is that I find, and people feel the energy. That's the beautiful thing that I like about these tools is is that. 99% of everybody is going to feel the energy and you feel it in the form of a tingle, you feel a buzzing, you might feel a heat, you might feel what's called a shift where it feels like you just got moved across the room uh, <laughs> in, in an elevator, okay? So the, the tools themselves have, have some very specific purposes. The, the, the pyramid will, will do multi uh, multitasking. Uh, there's some other tools I use. One is called a neutralization ring, which I also have on my website. And I sell these on my website, too, so everybody c- can uh, benefit from them. Um, so the neutralization ring, when you use that one and stand over it, it'll draw out negative energies out of your body to kind of shake the tree a little bit so when we go in, things are a little easier to clean up. Okay, there, there's also uh, Beamer Wands, uh, which is copper pipe coated with gold, and they, they hold the, the frequency of uh, the five noble gases, which, which will uh, uh, facilitate uh, something different uh, depending on what you need to do. Mm-hmm. So, so the tools uh, are very important. A lot of healers will look at me and say, well, why don't, why don't you just use your hands? Are you not good enough? And, and it, all I say to that is, well, my hands are holding the tools, aren't they? So I am using my hands. But I'm just amplifying the energies and I'm actually doing some good instead of taking somebody's money and sending them on their way without uh, uh, the problem being fixed. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the radionics. I'm very interested in that. I've uh, talked to other people about it from time to time. I'm always fascinated by radionics and how they're applied and what they are. Let's start with, you know defining a little bit the radionic instruments that you're using well uh, before i got into using the the pyramids i I was into radionics now radionics is the use of frequencies everything uh, in our body everything in the world everything in the universe vibrates at its own frequency so with a radionic device you're you're able to uh, isolate and, and cancel out and harmonize these frequencies. So, so let's say um, you want to work on somebody's liver and remove a virus. Well, the, the radionic code or vibration for liver is 22 by 75 
point six. <laughs> so you you put that in the machine, and then you'll take the the the, the uh, um, radionic value of of a specific virus, and you'll put that in the machine. You'll flick a button, and it'll harmonize out the last frequency you put into the machine out of the area that you put in. So okay. it, it works as as a, as a, a deharmonizer, let's say, uh, to to uh, nullify any specific frequencies. Now these frequencies have to be extremely precise. If they're out just a little bit, it's not going to work so well. So, so what I like to use my radionic device for is actually taking frequencies and, and, and charging them into, into different things like wristbands. Okay, So uh-huh. I, I, I buy from China these wristbands with the holograms in them. Uh, buy them bulk and, and I use them as a homeopathic medicine. I, I use them uh, to give people protection. I use them for, for various uh, different things. And I've developed one that works really good for sleep. If you have a hard time sleeping at night, you wear one of these wristbands and you sleep like a baby. Uh, for balancing female hormones, when that good old time of the month comes around, they work fantastic. My, my wife loves them. So, so there's many, many uses for all this, but uh, at the same time, it's it's getting the the, the uh, humanity to realize, okay, there's there's some validity to these things. Uh, you know, how do they work? And and uh, we need to take the the mysticism out of it, and just let people know that they do work. So that's what I like to do with my radionic devices to charge things. I, I'm now making a, a monatomic Ormus gold water. Uh, charge with some specific heavenly frequencies connecting with with Christ consciousness and and different energies within the universe that works amazing for depression and for anxiety for for expanding your aura and, and for doing things on on a on a very spiritual level so the radionic device has got a lot of uh, um, purpose and within my clinic i don't quite use it the way a lot of other people do there's radionic devices out there that are computer driven like a skio right. or an right. indigo okay uh they 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 work too okay they they work very well it, it all depends on the practitioner how good is the practitioner you could take one of these big fancy pyramids and and try to heal somebody with it but if you don't know what you're doing you're not going to do any good so no matter what the modality is if it's radionics if it's metaphysicals if if it's hands on healing no matter what it is if the practitioner knows what they're doing then it'll work uh any other modalities or um technology i call all of this technology by the way i consider a crystal to be advanced technology sure um the types of crystals you're you're working with uh, as something that maybe even uh we can leave people with us tonight uh that we can work with on our own a little bit just even to kind of balance ourselves out well one of the the newest crystals out there um is called shungite shungite is is uh, it's a black stone uh, it looks a lot like it could be carbon. Uh, it is found only in one area in Russia from a meteor strike. <laughs> and and uh, it left behind this this mineral called shungite, and it's got a, a lot of healing properties to it. You can take the crystals of it, uh, shards, and put it in water to charge water with minerals. It'll purify your water at a very, very high level. It'll add s- specific healing energies to it. Um, the pyramids will absorb EMF and ELF frequencies from your computer. Ooh, that's a big one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From, from your Wi-Fi, you put one of these on your Wi-Fi, and it'll absorb all those energies so they don't transmit into your body. So there's a lot of really good healing aspects with Shungite. Uh, the community, the, the world is still getting to know it. And it's starting to realize its true potential, and it still hasn't even woken up yet. There's still a lot of things that you're going to be able to do with it that, that haven't activated because it, it's so new. Now, I, I do work a lot with, with crystal quartz, okay? Uh, now, um, our body is made up of, of two speci- or a, a bunch of specific minerals. Number one is carbon. The second one is, car- uh, is silica dioxide. Silica dioxide is quartz crystal. Now, it's been said that, that as this whole ascension thing is happening, our, our bodies are going to turn into a crystal. Okay? We're going to, we're going to go crystal. And what that means is the silica dioxide within our bodies is going to become a hardened quartz. So that's what I get out of it. So how do you top up your quartz level? <laughs> right, right. <yeah. laughs> a lot of people are asking me. Here, here's how you do it. You you go and you find a product called diatomaceous earth. A lot of people have heard about this. A lot of people use it to 
clear parasites out of their body, but the high level of silica dioxide in it is what your body needs in order for all these activations to happen. Diatomaceous earth has got a lot of spiritual properties. It's got a lot of health properties. It's got a lot of nutrients that your body needs. Now, if, if you're a person who uh, is concerned about their bone health and you're taking calcium, well, I'm going to tell you right now to stop because calcium will kill you. If you take too much of it, it's yeah. going to build up in your veins and arteries and your heart and your brain, and, and it's going to kill you. What you need more than anything else is the, the uh, component that is going to absorb the calcium into your, into your bones, and that is silica dioxide. Uh, uh, vitamin K2 is also very big. Everybody knows about magnesium and vitamin D, but right. nobody knows about the silica. So that is is, is a very uh, important role in our bodies as, as far as an energy, as far as a nutrient, as far as an ascension uh, element. That's pretty interesting stuff. I had not heard that before either. Yes, I've been very aware of the, uh, especially the magnesium aspect of it. But diet, say that again. Diatomaceous earth. It's okay. from crushed, crushed diatoms. Okay. There you go. Um, assuming that there are folks out there, and I, I know there's some people out there that do, how would they contact you? How do they work with you? Um, it, it's, 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 it's very easy. Um, go to my website, chriskaler.net, and it's spelled K-E-H-L-E-R dot net. Very easy to find. Uh, you can read about my tools and about some of the things I have within my store, my webpage. Um, now, if you want to book an appointment, go onto the front page of my website. There's a little button that says book appointment. All you do is press on that button. Uh, a calendar will open up and you can pick a date and it'll be it'll show you the availability I have. It's it's from a company called Bookfresh. It's fantastic. <laughs> so you can book your own appointment. It's easy as as as, as cooking hot dogs. Okay? And you, you can f- find out what what day works best for you and what time works best for you. Fill in all the information and, and what's going to happen is is when your appointment comes up I will phone you or I will Skype you and we will do the appointment. So it's not going to cost you any long distance. You're not going to burn up any of, of your time on your cell phone. And the, the cost for, for my services, which do work very well, is only $55 a session. There's a lot of people out there who will charge you 800 or 1000 or 1200 bucks to do this type of work. Those people are full of ego, and, and uh, you don't need them. You need somebody who's not going to take all your money. You need somebody who's going to be honest, upfront. And do as much work as they can in as little time as you can so you can get on with your life. Excellent. Very good. There you go. Um, one more time, your website, Chris. Website is chriskaler.net. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to break on the hour queue. And when we come back, we're going to introduce you to Whisper, who is a person that has gone through... Um, about 10 years of interactions with alien ET attacks and uh, we're going we're gonna to talk to him about his experiences and then uh, we're going to also go over how Chris worked with him and the outcomes that he had there and I think uh, for those of you who have an interest in this and again I know my audience I know you do this is going to be a huge interview this is the first time the whisper has come forward and we will do that all from the flip side of Rock Planet Radio. We'll be right back. Off Planet Radio will return after this brief interlude. Stay tuned. 